another video uh, about automatic project. Today we are going to look at a way of creating workflows, but this time uh, programmatically. So let me introduce very quickly today workflows based on Java DSL. As, as the name suggests, uh, it's a domain specific language for Java to define your workflows. So essentially, we can create pretty much any type of project based on the automatic archetypes. I already created one based on the basic one, the most generic one. And let's create a very simple one, a workflow that we can just copy from the getting started on based on Java DSL from the automatic documentation and simply create a class here. I just have that one. So let me just create the class, my workflows. And by that, just paste it in. Right, let's resolve the imports. That's pretty much it. So this gives us a very quick start. So let me just make this a little bit bigger. So what we do here, we create a new workflow with the ID name hello, with the description sample hello work workflow, and with the version with number one. At the same time, we declare the data object of type string with the name, and then we can easily get this builder to create the starting of it, a single task to log the hello world, and then completing that as simple as that. So if we just go ahead and start it in the dev mode of the automatic project. So in a couple of seconds, we should get it up and running. All right, there we go, we have it there. So first of all, we can simply go to the, oh, sorry, uh, process management UI. And there we can see immediately that we have a workflow. What is interesting here to note is that based on the workflow definition, we immediately get the information about what it is and how it's actually modeled. So even though we wrote everything as code, we have the nice visualization of it as well. So that gives us a very simple way to start. So let's get going with the dev mode. And then we can go to Swagger UI as well. And we can see that we have the version one of this little workflow. We can just simply say it, John, and just run it. And if you go back here, you will see that we have the hello world printed in the console because that's essentially what we wanted to do with this extremely basic workflow but you can do way more with that and that is a lot of that is described actually in the getting start uh, getting started with the java dsl so you can see we have different options to do it like branching so you can see here we have the options to to the split with one uh, branch or the second branch so we can actually get this method as well and let's just put this in into our workflows and just resolve the imports that's pretty much it so let's see if that refreshes automatically how do we get anything there yep and as you can see again we have a workflow that is automatically created out of that so we have nicely collected that information we have all this data in and again, same goes here. So if we look at that, we have the hello one and we have the split one. This time you can see that this one did not define the version number. So if we go back to the source code, you can see here we only specify the identifier and the description, no version. So then the endpoint of the service API is not version either. Looking at the other examples, again, you can go through all of them. Uh, so we have the split and join as well. We have the split on events. So this gives you a, a possibility to react to events coming out from outside or based on the timeouts. We can invoke services. Here you have the invocation of the local service, meaning that you have a CDI, CDI being uh, acting as your service. You can specify easily what service it is, call the method on it, and what is the in arguments of it. 
obviously taking that out of the context of the process instance, a workflow instance. Similar, we can do the REST invocation based on OpenAPI. So we can simply specify what is the OpenAPI definition file, what operation we want to invoke. And again, the same things is like what data we want to pass when invoking it. User tasks, similar here. Uh, but what I would like to bring to your attention as well is that you can essentially, essentially mix and match workflows. So if we, for instance, do this and just create a very simple uh, workflow definition, but this time based on DPMN. So we just create a process diagram. So uh, DPMN workflow, we can call it uh, PPMN and that's pretty much it. So again, we'll just, for the sake of saving the time, we make it a very simple with just uh, script task and then the end event we can make it as complex as we need so let's go just java and again we'll just use the log statement hello from and let's just put it in quotes from bpmn workflow that's pretty much it and just nicely name it hello from bpmn that's essentially all. So if we just save it, no, we don't want to have the validation. As soon as we save it and we go back here, look at that, we should get the BPMN workflow as well. As you can see here, we have the BPM workflow. Again, similar notation, but this one is purely based on the model one. So it looks slightly different or more uh, aligned with what we actually modeled. And now we can actually create another workflow this time let's just grab a copy of this method just to be faster on that. And what we want to do is the subflow, sub workflow. Uh, we can just remove that. Sub workflow. Sub workflow. So instead of logging, what we do is the sub workflow called ppmn is just the name uh, sorry and this is the id so this is the ppmn so this is and then just end it, right so as soon as we do that we should be able to interact easily with the workflows from uh, the different workflow definitions so let's go back here Oh, uh, yes, and now we are back, right? And of course, it did not reload correctly, I believe. All right, and let's just bounce it quickly. The work of DSL has this a, a little bit of an issue that it not always resolves the changes to the uh, modified uh, classes, so it might not uh, see all the the changes but let's see if after bouncing the server the service we'll see this going on yes and as you can see here we have sample uh, sub workflow and if we go back here refresh that so that's the and this is the our guy that we wanted to call it so if we just call it here test and there we go we remove that and look at that and there we have the hello from BPM and workflow as well. So that gave us a possibility to easily get combined the workflow defined as Java DSL and workflow defined as BPMN to work together. So that gives us a way more options how we can represent our business logic. So in many cases, we wanted to start high level where the BPMN shines really nice because it gives us immediate look at what the workflow is, is about. And then if we have more technical workflows, we can easily define them as code as well. So with that, I would like to thank you very much for listening to the, today's uh, presentation and stay tuned for the upcoming ones. Thanks a lot.